Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. As I have approached the circuit analysis of the bipolar junction transistor, or BJT, in my video series on the subject, I assumed a particular current gain, or HFE, of the transistor. The assumption is that this is a constant, and, well, this is the standard small signal analysis assumption. However, this assumption breaks down when we start seeing large swings in the collector emitter voltage with real-life BJTs. We have a problem because there is significant variation in HFE with large changes in collector emitter voltage, or VCE. The purpose of this short video is to show you a bit about this phenomenon. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. So let's just dive into this first with the LTSPICE circuit simulator. So here is my representative test circuit to demonstrate the effect of collector emitter voltage on the current gain of a bipolar junction transistor. Here you can see I have my 2N3904 transistor. I'm driving its base with a constant 31 microamp current source. This should give me a collector current of about 10 milliamps with LT Spice's default values for the 2N3904 transistor. This is a good current to drive the collector load of the red LED. The voltage source is a ramp from 5 volts DC to 30 volts DC over a period of 500 milliseconds. So the question is, what is the current gain of the transistor at various input voltages? Well, let's simulate this and see what LT Spice comes up with. And, well, here are the simulation results. The green line is the collector emitter voltage, or VCE. The red line is the collector current, or IC. Notice first that the red line is not flat. It is ever increasing with VCE. So the question is, well, how much is it really increasing? Remember, scale is everything. So I put the cursors over on the far left where the voltage source is 5 volts. VCE is 2.98 volts, and IC is 9.3 milliamps. And we know the base current, IB, is 31 microamps. So the calculated HFE is 9.3 milliamps divided by 31 microamps, or 300. Okay, so let's go to the other extreme. I have moved my cursors up to where our input voltage is 30 volts. This gives us a VCE of 27.97 volts and a collector current, or IC, of 11.572 milliamps. Again, we know the base current is 31 microamps, so the calculated HFE is 11.572 milliamps divided by 31 microamps, or 373.3. This is an increase of 24.4% over the HFE at a VCE of 2.98 volts. Now, well, let's back this up to a VCE of 10 volts and see what we have there. I mean, after all, this is maybe a bit more of a realistic change. We now have a VCE of 10.01 volts. The collector current is now 9.938 milliamps. With our base current of 31 microamps, this gives us a calculated HFE of 320.6. Now, this is still an increase of 6.86% over the current gain, or HFE, at a VCE of 2.98 volts. But, you say, this is just a simulation. What about real-life transistors? And this was my very same question. So let's take a look at that. To answer this question for myself, I pulled out my handy-dandy curve tracer, 
and my drawer of two N3904 transistors. I randomly grabbed 14 transistors out of my bin and performed an HFE versus VCE trace for each of them, saving the data to a text file for analysis with Excel. The target was a constant base current of 31 microamps and a power supply voltage from 0 to 12 volts. Now, I used a bit of algebra to extrapolate out to a VCE of 15 volts. So let's see how this all came out in Excel. The horizontal axis is the collector emitter voltage. The vertical axis is the current gain of the transistor, or HFE. As you can see, we have quite a wide variety of current gains. You can also see that each curve has a positive slope. This means that the current gain is increasing with increasing collector emitter voltage. There was, however, one exception that caused me to rescan number 13. Its current gain actually decreased with increasing VCE. Uh, and it did the same thing with the rescan that I made a day later. Hmm. Well, there's always got to be one in the group, you know. Okay, but what do the numbers look like? Well, if I set my nominal at a VCE of 3 volts, like I did in the simulation, the average increase in HFE when VCE goes up to 10 volts is 6.95%. Notice how similar this is to the results with LT Spice Simulator. It gave us a 6.86% increase. The worst case increase with the real life transistors was a whopping 14.55%. What is drastically different between LT Spice and the real life transistors is the actual current gain of the transistors. LT Spice used the maximum HFE from the data sheet, which states that the current gain will be in the range of 100 to 300 when the collector emitter voltage is 1 volt and the collector current is 10 milliamps. The average HFE that I measured with my 14 transistors is 138.1, also with a collector voltage of about 1 volt. Now, admittedly, the collector current was only about 4.3 milliamps, not quite the 10 milliamps of the data sheet or our simulation. At a VCE of 10 volts, the average HFE was 159.86. The maximum current gain was 261, and the minimum was 99.93. In a future video, I will show you how to force LT Spice to use a specific HFE for your transistor, or add a completely new transistor to your simulation. Now, I did a quick modification to the LT Spice simulation so the current gain, or HFE, at a VCE of 10 volts was 160 in keeping with the average results of my real-life transistors. How does the simulation look now with a VCE of 3 volts? Well, I have a collector current of 4.64 milliamps, which gives me an HFE of 149.68. The current gain at a VCE of 10 volts is 6.9% higher than at 3 volts. Funny. This is exactly the change I found in the average change with the real transistors. That's good to know. So what did we learn from all this? Well, when we're doing small signal analysis, the assumption that the current gain is a constant, well, it works well, and is a reasonable assumption. The changes in current gain over smaller excursions in collector emitter voltage, well, they're pretty inconsequential. However, if the collector emitter voltage is going to have larger excursions, then we can expect the current gain to change much more significantly. The amount of change will be different from transistor to transistor, even of a given manufacturer's part number. 
Some transistor types will likely experience well, less change in current gain with changes in their collector emitter voltage than we saw here with the 2N3904. But with that said, others will be far greater. We also saw that the actual current gain of any given transistor of a specific manufacturer's part number might be very different than another transistor of the same type. Now, with all of this said, the current gain is also a function of the collector current. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.